diversity is the number one priority in many organizations, but very few have data before a candidate is hired. So please welcome Solutions Con Consultant Lisa Schiller to the stage as she dives into DEI data across the recruiting process and shows you how you can uncover where different folks are dropping out in your funnel. Over to you, Lisa. Thanks so much, Marissa, and I really appreciate all of you spending some time with us today. We're really excited to walk through some of the DEI data that we provide to our clients in GEM and how that can really start to help you understand your process and make really informed decisions about how you can improve it. A couple of things that we'll talk through today is, first of all, how can we understand the diversity makeup today of our hiring pipeline? Secondly, what areas do we need to improve in? And then lastly, how can we identify and leverage best practices across the organization to better attract and hire from underrepresented groups? I always like to say you can't change what you can't measure. Um, and so what's really great about the GEM platform is that we'll give you a ton of hard data to make really informed business decisions around the best way to increase the diversity hiring at your organization. So I think this is a really great place to start. Um, this is a, an example of one of the dashboards that we can provide to you within the GEM platform. Um, this is gonna give us a really kind of macro view of what's going on um, in this case within our engineering group year to date. So a lot of really valuable information that we can share back to the business. But one thing that I really wanted to focus on first is this hires by gender widget. Um, so this is gonna give us a breakdown within that group of the percentage of women versus men that we've hired this year. Um, we at GEM have a really lofty gender parity goal. Uh, we want to see an equal 50-50 split. Um, as you can see, we're not quite there, um, but what we'll enable you to do is actually dig into why that may be and identify different areas where you might be able to improve that gender diversity. Our pipeline analytics is one of our uh, newer tools within the GEM platform. Um, this is going to give you a really solid understanding of what's going on across your entire hiring process. You can sort this by a variety of different things. So I can group it by job. I could also group it by recruiter or by hiring manager. So I can start to understand different trends within my process. Um, I can also break this down by gender and I can also break it down by race and ethnicity. So again, this is gonna start to give me a really um, solid understanding of what's happening within the process and where I might be able to improve it. So what this is telling me here at a glance is that for a software engineer position, um, all of the different stages that my candidates have moved through throughout the year. We're gonna be able to understand from the very top of the funnel, how many people have actually completed an application all the way through to hired. And as I'm looking at this, I start to see something really interesting. Um, as you can see, the women um, at the top of the funnel only make up about 26% um, of all of those applicants. But if you start to look further down in the process, I can see that once I can get a um, woman on site for an interview, I actually have a really high conversion rate um, to an offer and then also to a hire. So what that tells me is that I need far fewer women in the top of um, the, or excuse me, I, if I can get more women to the top of the funnel, I can start to move them through the process um, at a much higher rate. That's going to go a really long way to helping me ensure that that gender parity is closer to the 50-50 that we're um, really targeting. Another thing that we'll do is we'll be able to uh, give you a calculator over here so that you can break out um, and really forecast for your business exactly how many people you do need to get into the top of the funnel in order to make those hires that you're looking to make. And this is based on your historical data. Of course, as you know, we're going to pull this information right from your ATS. Um, and so you can understand how effective do I need to be at the beginning um, through outreach in order to hire the number of candidates that I'd like. Now, again, we can also break this down by race and ethnicity. Um, one really quick note on the race and ethnicity information. This is aggregate data. Um, it is really good for directional um, information. This is all, uh, again, at an aggregate level. It's uh, completely anonymized. So it's not tied directly to one person. And really our point of view on this is um, if we're waiting until the very end, until candidates can self-identify, uh, that information is not really giving us a, an effective way to start to um, kind of improve the, the process from the very beginning. Uh, if we can understand from this data, um, hey, how are we moving different cohorts through the process? And are we moving the underrepresented groups um, through the process at the same rates as others? 
Um, again, we can start to really make some decisions that are going to impact the process up at the very beginning and the top of the funnel. So now we have an understanding of exactly kind of where we are um, currently tracking um, within the, the hiring funnel. Now, I understand, as I'm sure all of you do, that sitting back and waiting for diverse talent to apply to your positions is just not an effective strategy. Um, I know that I'm going to have to go out and start to outreach these candidates you know, really aggressively um, to get them into the hiring funnel so that I can then continue to move them through the process. Um, so what's great is that we're actually going to be able to give you all of the information that you need um, to really craft super compelling content that resonates very well with the diverse pools um, and then again replicate that across the business. So what I'm looking at here is for these two different projects, the software engineer and then um, a talent pool that I have for a particular front end position, I can start to understand uh, men versus women in the process and how they're moving through relative to one another. So I can then begin to identify um, the different um, sequences that we're sending out, for instance, that are more effective for women versus men. Now, I mentioned at the top of the call that we have a, a pretty lofty goal around gender parity. Um, and what that means is that oftentimes when we open up a new rec, uh, we'll really aggressively target um, diverse talent from the beginning, uh, meaning that we'll sprint towards only outreaching to the diverse candidates um, for a certain period of time once we open a rec. And this information really does bear that out. Um, so I can see here that for this particular sequence, I am reaching out to 63% women versus 37% um, men. And that trend really continues all the way throughout this entire view. Um, so first, that's great. That means that we're really um, aligning to our, our actions to our goals, right? Um, but it also means that if I'm still not making those diverse hires, I need to continue to refine my process to make sure that I'm pulling those um, diverse candidates through the, the process. Um, so what I can then start to do is dig into these different sequences and understand um, all the metrics around them. So I can understand, for instance, this one here, although I'm reaching out to a really high percentage of, of women, as mentioned, um, we're still not making those hires, but what's great is that we're starting to see some higher percentages of women um, replying and expressing interest. And so those sequences are the ones I would start to want to really dig in and replicate across the business. So if I look at this particular um, sequence here, I see uh, across the top line, um, lots of different statistics around open rates, click-through rates, et cetera. Um, I'll also have information around link tracking. So what I like about this, and I'll show you in just a second, is we can start to really drill down into the particular links that seem to be resonating with the diverse talent pools. I can also view each of the stages across the sequence. So again, if this one's performing really well, Maybe I want to replicate this exact same first um, stage in another sequence, right? Maybe I want to send it on behalf of one of our female engineers if we are seeing a really high percentage of people clicking through and viewing her profile, for instance. Speaking of links, again, we'll give you the insight across the entire organization into which of the links are resonating um, specifically within the sequences. So if I can then marry this um, understanding of which sequences are performing really well, and then understanding within those, which of the links are um, seeing a lot of traction and where I'm getting a lot of reply rates. So I can then um, include those in future sequences. So this is an interesting one for me. You know, the number one most commonly kind of clicked on and then replied link is uh, gem.com, which is no surprise. As we're reaching out to talent, it's very likely they wanna understand what we're all about. Um, but the second most commonly clicked on link is this um, blog where we highlight what it's like to work at GEM. And so what's interesting here is that I see a 90% reply rate for every click. That's a very, very high number. And so something there is very clearly resonating. If I hop over and take a look at what that blog post is, one of the key things that we highlight is our diversity initiatives. Um, we make it very, very clear from the very first time that we outreach to a candidate, that diversity is top of mind for us. Um, we go into detail about why we think that's important and then also exactly what we're doing um, to ensure that our team is uh, does continue to be diverse. So again, based on the information all the way from the top of the funnel, you know how many diverse candidates we need to get into the process to pull that through to a hire, 
And then digging in at a really um, micro level, how can I then understand, you know, once I can get the candidates into the funnel, how am I going to engage with them effectively? How am I going to make sure that the information that I'm sharing with them resonates and helps drive forward to making those more diverse um, hires? And then again, at the very, very end, I can understand at a really granular level um, what exactly it is that's working. And then again, use that across all of my other outreach efforts. All of those things are some of the um, key pieces of information that we're going to be able to, to share with you um, as our clients. Um, I am so thankful for you spending some time with me today to go through that. Um, please feel free to visit the Expo Hall um, later. Our customer success team is there and they're really excited to be able to answer questions for you, do some more deep product dives. Um, and with that, I'll hand it back to Marissa to introduce our next topic.